All right. Welcome back, everybody, to another long form crack and conversation. We have with us today a very, very special guest who is the host of Disclosure tonight, in addition to the late night update, Thomas Fessler. Sir, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, absolutely. Thanks for having me on here, guys. It's uh, you got, you know, you've got a great uh, podcast. You're involved in a, you've got a great audience and you cover a lot of topics with, uh, you know, a lot of people are afraid to cover potentially in the way that you do because the amount of censorship and everything that's been going on in social media these days. I, I appreciate that so much, but thank you, especially coming from you, sir. I appreciate that. Well, just for a little bit of background uh, for the audience that aren't too familiar with you, um, personally, I actually came across you uh, a couple of months ago, but then I also came across you again interviewing uh, Lou Elizondo himself yeah. as of the time of we're recording this just a handful of days ago, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. I then delved into your channel even more, and I said, wow, like I just told you before we started recording, I think you're doing a phenomenal thing for the, the movement, for the UFO community, and I mean, I, I don't know where to start really but i'd love to get your take on what you see within the ufo community right now some of the good things coming out of of, of the revelations of you know people like uh, lou elizondo christopher mellon but also if you don't mind speaking on some of the unfortunate things that we all see going on in the ufo community now as well now let's take it down with the good um sure. we've got a little bit of information that's coming out in dribbles so, uh, you know, as we had back in June 26 of this year, we had a UAPTF report, uh, report that came out that revealed out of 144 cases in a very short amount of time, only, uh, what was it, one of those was a balloon. Everything else was unidentified, as they would call it. And just that in its own, although it wasn't that much, a lot of people had a lot of big expectations. Oh, they're going to pull out the aliens, wheel them out on the stage, show us some of the crash craft. None of that happened, but what it did is it opened up the opportunity to start talking about this in an academic in are arena, to talk, start talking seriously about it in a, you know, um, from an overall perspective of, yes, this stuff is actually real, and it's opening up funding for different people to go ahead and start doing things. We've got uh, Ave Loeb, who's got the new uh, um, project that he's doing for doing observations. Uh, on okay. the planet, not dealing with what we've had going for the longest time with um, SETI, which is the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, where they've been saying, oh, there's nothing here. Look way yeah. out there, you know? There's something <laughs> out there. Don't look down here. When the reality is, that's been a big psyop telling everybody to, there's nothing here. We haven't seen anything. We have NASA, where there's been plenty of different things coming in on the news feed. As soon as it would come out, they'd cut it. I think it was Bill Nelson who just came out and talked about it more again today with respect to, yeah, there's like a, initially they were talking about 140 cases. Now they have 300 cases that they're looking out at. So there's just a lot more, if you want to call it, opening up that's happening with respect to being able to talk about the phenomena, being able to engage with it. Uh, what's not happening is we only went back to 2014. We didn't go back 75 years to Roswell or before. There's a lot of stuff that's been going on within our country, within the world for that matter, mm. that our government has been working in a coordinated manner to you know, deny it, to put out disinformation about it, to go ahead and prevent the American people from understand, understanding what's really going on with it. Now, Lou Elizondo has gone and said that this has got to be a slow process because what we're talking about, something that has to happen on a, on a paradigm shift where we're going from, because it's gonna affect our society, it's gonna affect our governments, it's gonna affect our religion, it's gonna take a lot of things that we're all involved in today, and it's gonna make us see them in a different light, and they're afraid, for maybe reasons that should or shouldn't be there, that it's gonna be too shocking to the American people. Well, if you look at the surveys that have been going on in the United States for a regular, relatively open uh, crowd of people, They've basically gone and said that over 50% of the people in America mm. now believe and acknowledge that our craft are being, our, our country is being visited by craft. And those craft are going and, you know, piloted by extraterrestrial beings, whether they're from this planet from a long time ago or they're from another dimension or somewhere else, way the heck out there. There is a high level of belief. When the UFO report came out, the markets didn't shift. They were afraid it was going to cause a crash of the markets. The people were going to start, you know, going crazy in the sh in, in the streets and shooting at things in the skies. No, <laughs> it was just like a, a another regular day. And it's, um, 
it's great to see that people are accepting of it and they're starting to understand it. But when you have this pathological skepticism that's going out by a bunch of people within the UFO community, where they're right. going and just ripping anybody else apart about anything they possibly can. I mean, there was a, there was a schmuck who even asked in, in the recent interview with Lou Elizondo, trying to challenge whether or not he actually worked in the position that he had in the Pentagon. It's like, you know, people just want to take anything. And, you know, it, it's small enough, the whole community we have out there that believe of stuff, let alone the people yeah. who are actually talking about it, and engaging with it. Because truthfully, America has a high level of apathy in right. regards to this. This is probably the most, you know, most important topic we have that changes everything. Yet, why aren't people talking about it? What's, why did the news stop talking about it? Why did the media stop talking about it? Why did everybody in Washington stop making any statements on it with regards to it? There's something that they're doing to, if you want to call it, suppress it, like they're trying to suppress other information and it just needs to open up. I, I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, just before we started recording, we discussed the, the, the unfortunate issue of tribalism that seems to be, and again, I am not perfect. I'm not trying to pass judgment in the sense of, you know, I'm perfect. I have a lot of flaws myself, you name it. But to see the amount of, you know, ve vehement tribalism and attacks amongst one another, like you said, we're a small enough community as it is. Now, I mean, I, with, with that being said, though, do you, looking at both perspectives, do you see why some people question Mr. Elizondo, given that you've recently had the, the, the opportunity to speak to him or not so much? And I'm, I'm genuinely asking. Well, I believe what he has to say. He's tiptoeing around a lot of high, and everybody in the UFO community is tiptoeing in the area of national security, in the area of top secret. Right. With respect to that, um, he's trying to talk and say what he can, avoiding mm -hmm. what he can say. And it doesn't seem to me, at least, that he's out there as a, as a government agent trying to spread misinformation to lead us down a path. Now, do I believe there's a particular narrative that he's trying to go towards? Yes. And that's his individual uh, person or who he's involved with that's giving us a narrative of slowly rolling this information out. I don't think there is a coordinated effort to go ahead and, uh, you know, try and lead us down a path to damnation, if you'd call it, or about down a, a wrong path. My only concern is, is the uh, classific uh, them trying to classify everything going on with UAP as a threat or as a right. threat to national right. security. But there at the is same so much time, though, I disagree with Stephen Greer's perspective of everything is good. It, 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 like I don't, I don't, I, I don't think we can take those two polar opposites either way, and that that is no. a problem, absolutely. You know, if uh, you hear about everything in this love and light, right, and everything is yeah. so great and hunky, but then you talk to a person who's very highly credible, and they talk about being paralyzed by the phenomena in a, in a and if you want to call it in a psychic way, they're on the ground and a gray comes up and puts the hand over the face, takes a long, like a knitting needle thing, puts it around the eye, jams it through the back of the eye socket, inserting something into the brain. Now, right. Yeah. You know, it's not all love and light. It's not all rainbows and unicorns. There's right. always light and dark, good and bad. And to try and say that it's all going to be, you know, wonderful and it's, it's all great. You know, it's, it's, it's hard to take that and everything because look at humanity. Mm, look at all the things that yeah. we do as humanity. We kill each other. We have wars. We have mass genocides. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's massive starvations, things going on. Uh, look what we do to all the different animals and labs and all this stuff, all in the sake of humanity. Right. So, now, speak, you know, yeah. go ahead. No, no, please. Go on. Yeah. There's a talk of, you know, what about the people who have gone through abductions, who have been through all this different stuff? But if you hear about it, it's relatively mm -hmm. not that bad. You right. know, I, I've had more medical experiments done to me by doctors that are a heck of a lot more painful and different stuff than talking about mm -hmm. some, you know, anal probing that's going on. Hell, I've had the 25 foot camera shoved up there. I'm old enough for that. And it's, you know, nothing's the greatest. So it's right. kind of like there may be a reason for it, just like we use that justification for doing stuff with other life on this planet, but we're no saints. Now, speaking of certain information coming out at a certain time and there being a reason for certain things, you know, deliberate or, or not so much, we spoke about this prior to us uh, starting this re this recording of this episode, 
but and you had a very interesting answer that I found, and it was that I had brought up. Uh, I said, you know, um, uh, Thomas, I I wonder why, you know, for example, why now with regards to disclosure, but not in the sense of you know just randomly saying why now. When I say why now, I mean why not 2005? You know, why not? You know, why not? Tw why 2010? And you had something very interesting where you said you talked about. Uh, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you said maybe there's a deadline of sorts. Could you elaborate on that in your in your thinking? Yeah, and 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 that answer came from a observation that I've been doing. I've been watching UFO reports, if you want to call it, for a long time. And mm. coming as we're going through the great human malware virus that's been going around, there has been an increase in the number of sightings we have. But it's right. sightings not off in the middle of nowhere. It's over major metropolitan areas. Not only that, we're also seeing an increase in the number of craft at a time. So I see this as kind of, there's an escalation that's going on. At the same time, we're talking about taking this information and trying to bring it out and go public. So is there a deal that's been made? Is there something with a timeline? Because we know the government always likes to push off things and says, oh no, we're not ready for it. We can't do this. Yeah. Is there something, a deal that was made? Or is there something that they're aware of that this non-human intelligence is moving forward on their agenda? Whether we do this part, it's our part or not. Right, right. Now, within that agenda, do you firmly believe that there are different, um, uh, I guess you could say factions, if you want to call them, or elements of individuals, uh, some trying to keep it secret, some trying to bring it out more so uh, with respects to maybe not all the technology, but even just the confirmation of their existence. We see now the head of NASA just today uh, said that, if I'm not mistaken, please don't quote me for those listening because I don't have the paper in front of me, but he said, I do believe he admitted UFOs are real. He said, from my understanding, they're not from a foreign adversary. He goes, I want to know where they come from. Now, again, I think he's letting on to, to he knows much more than what he's letting on but what's your take on on that they're real yeah they're <laughs> they've they've been here for a very long time interacting with man over key points in our history on the planet how long they've been here uh it's who knows have they been right. here longer than humans <laughs> they very well could be where are they coming from well at least we know a lot of them are coming from out of the ocean so you know that would probably give you an idea there's something at the bottom of the ocean floor areas we can't get to down in the deep structures of the earth that you know there could be hundreds of thousands or millions of these potential extraterrestrials they could be ancient terrestrials it could have been a civilization that hundreds of thousands of years ago figured out how to make the jump how to survive the cataclysmic cycle that happens on earth on a regular basis by moving where they you know it's like kind of we're like the three the three pigs building the house of sticks on the surface of the land that every so often you get a tidal wave that's a thousand feet high if not bigger washing over the surface of the land it's not safe right. it's, it's convenient but it's not a safe place to go so it's just a, a matter of, you know, there's things that we don't understand with regards to, are there multiple uh, factions? Well, we're seeing different behaviors going in the United States than down in uh, like Verheina, uh, Brazil, uh, right. back in the, I believe it was in the 70s or, uh, what was the name? It was in the 70s or 80s. And right. uh, or stuff that's been reported in India uh, over in, uh, where was that? Italy where really? they've had different craft that have, you know, fired different things on different military, on different, if you want to call it humans, doing different things to them that doesn't align with what we're seeing here in the United States. Now, we do get cattle mutilations and stuff, and we do right. have a lot of abductions that are going on, but the overall, if you want to call it, more aggressive things that are happening aren't happening here. What, what's your perspective, sir, on two things? Um, these are a little bit sort of, I guess, um, some people might say we're going in down the rabbit hole, but screw it. Uh, there are being bases, alleged bases on the on the backside of the moon and your take on Skinwalker Ranch. Those might be some loaded questions, but I'd love to get your perspective on it. Well, supposedly, if we try to do a nuclear war, the intelligence is told us they're not going to let it happen. They don't want right. to have the planet destroyed. Right. Um, and, and, and they're willing to go ahead and split the moon in two to prove to us that they have the ultimate power with regards to what's going on here on Earth. Um, Is so, this right? They're willing to split the moon into two. Yeah, yeah that's that's an interesting statement. Whoa, yeah, that I, came from uh, Grant Cameron. He was on my channel about a month and a half ago. He talked about that. 
and is this, this is coming across opinion. through many people that the message has been clear with regards to them not liking what we're doing with nuclear power, nuclear energy, nuclear weapons on our planet. Oh shit. I, I had no idea about that. Oh, yeah. I, if I, if I asked, did Mr. Cameron say, was it an off the record source? Was it uh, someone within the government or. No, I don't these mean to... are from actual experiencers who have been involved with and dealt with the the extra uh, the non human intelligence in different matters or forms. It's like there's a there's a physical, if you want to call it, uh, right. part of the overall experience of people who go through the overall abduction, and then there's also a a consciousness level where there's a communication that, uh, if you want to call it a cosmic, uh, not a cosmic, a uh, a thread. Um, like from string theory, a, a quantum thread that right. connects different people to the intelligence where it, you know, information just kind of pours in at different times, whether they, people like it or not. And that wow. seems to be a recurring theme. You mean this, this yes. it, it, as so far as moon splitting into that's, I would know that that's, I love that actually. Um, yeah, it, does. it builds into, I mean, you talked about, sorry to back up a second. You talked about um, the things that seem to be really inhumane, I guess is the best way to say it, don't seem to be happening in the United States. One of the biggest things to point to that's not in the United States right now is China. And they're doing these spacecraft flies. They're doing hypersonic things that, that, that break the laws of physics. Oh, I think his, his mic is muted. Um, oh. So uh, where do you, do you see, I mean, honestly, I, think the US has this technology too and so does lots of other countries but do you like why is China the one going public with it and has China you... really gone public with it well they, I, mean, the they, only, I mean it's the very, only yeah, thing it was... I the yeah sorry the I believe uh, Lou had mentioned the five continents initiative where yeah. they seem to be pushing for it at the UN uh, more so than the, than the US the UK anybody really and, yeah, then, and then only two days ago I mean there was a couple news stories about China's hypersonic civilian uh, space hypersonic missiles that, that can deliver that, nuclear no, payloads they, they, called it a, the they called it a civilian yeah. spacecraft is what they called it i don't i don't i want to know who the civilians are but yeah there was a the whole thing you know, going at hypersonic speeds they're going to be turned they're going to go splat on the back Yellow. of the craft yeah. they're going that fast they're not going to be able to move it was just, right. it's just interesting hypersonic that they're craft saying for they're doing it yeah, there's also been a lot of talk about with regards to the United States space program and our involvement with, with regards to us not properly funding it and seeing both China and Russia accelerating beyond the U.S. and our ambitions that go into it. Uh, right. We had uh, the patents that were came from Salvatore Pius that were that were called the UFO patents that yep. I covered in and several live streams on different channels in the past. That if you look at the the wealth of the information, I mean, we're talking about uh, what. Well, it's, you know, hyper con uh, superconductivity at room temperature. Uh, since then, that actually was achieved in the last year or so. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a gravitational uh, field generator that's used to uh, put a field around a craft and deal with an anti-gravity per se. But at that, at that, that same anti-gravity, uh, that gravitational field generator is also used to harness uh, the energy of a fusion reaction in a reactor that uh, a power unit that fits inside of a shipping container. So you look and all these things hit at once. And they said, the reason we have to go ahead and put these out there and release the patents is because we don't want China or other people to be able to have the rights to this stuff. Well, it doesn't matter mm. if they can steal it, they're going to build it. If anything, yeah, those are put in place to control the people who are potentially going to be building it for the government from doing anything else with the technology because they now own the patents on it. But the biggest thing is, all of that information at once coming from the Navy. Yeah. The Navy. Why? Well, if you look at where are the majority of the UFO sightings, we're seeing them, where are all the UFOs coming from? They're coming out of the freaking water. Oh, and who's interacting yeah. with all those ships the most? It's the Navy. So if there ever was a chance between human and non human collaboration as part of a potential deal, that points to it right there. It reminds me of right. the time when uh, James Iandoli on uh, Engaging the Phenomenon asked Lou about Project Starfish Prime, uh, an alleged attempt to uh, use uh, a bunch of war Navy warships to, to get UFOs, uh, no, excuse me if I'm not mistaken, to drop an EMP to see if that would do affect the UFO. And then well, it they already know it water. Does. And, 
They talk right. about a uh, a missile that was uh, what do you call it, detonated in the upper atmosphere. Yeah. And when that happened, the EMP force. Uh, from it literally caused uh, the UAP to fall from the sky because their ability to generate their warp field that ba that allows them to move with through our atmosphere and through the water as if it, it doesn't exist at right. insane speeds without breaking the sound barrier. Um, I wonder. I wonder what the down. why. Sorry, I wonder. Uh, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I wonder why or how the the energy that surrounds or the access that the, the UAP has within its vicinity it, to whether it's the ether realm, electric universe, you name it. I wonder what an EMP does that makes it just go kaput. You know, I, I wonder specifically. I think it's that electric electric body type of thing. And no, I, I understand. Find, I think right, it, but my thing is this though: electric. the same way that they talk about vis invisibility, like how it would bend around the craft in a wave. Huh? I wonder yeah. why that would not be the case for an EMP. You see what I'm saying? Like, I I know that the sorry. Oh. When they've talked about nuclear weapons going off before, right? And supposedly after we start blowing things up, that's what if you want to call it, ratchet up the interaction from the non-human intelligence. Yeah. The part that comes in on that that's really interesting is that um, see all the non-human. Um, wait a second here, set my mind just blanked on this one. So when the non-human intelligence and when that when that happens, we're not we're not exactly sure why it went on. Um, it, why why could it go ahead and just take the field and and cause it to go ahead and collapse and and not mm -hmm. continue? Um, there's a lot that we don't know, but what we do know is you're talking about the gravitational warp field that goes around the craft. Where we're seeing actually light bending around it. We're seeing the we're seeing the observation of invisibility, of duplication, of all these different things that come from uh, high high gravitational fields that we're only seeing on the level of galaxies or yeah. some black holes. Not just our sun. Our sun can have some effects to it, but nothing like what those do. So we're talking about just an advanced civilization that's, if you would we'll call it, is harnessing energy on the level of a black hole. Now, back to the original question that I just remembered. Um, and it flew out of my mind again. No, no, no worries at all. It's been a long day. Oh, please. No worries. I've had a lot of, a lot of uh, brain farts myself, as I like to, as I like to call it. If it comes back to you, then, then by all means, I just no, want to get a question you... again and I'll get it back. To, I'll get sure, you the... uh, It was uh, Skinwalker Ranch and the bases on the backside of the moon. Oh, yeah, all the oh. Way back there. oh, also, or also, sorry. Uh, it was about when a, um, when a UF, a UAP allegedly has, you know, no, a sort EMP. of energy around surrounding it when an emp hits it or is within its vicinity when it's uh, un, uh activated why the uap drops when in theory you would imagine that again just like light just like uh you know space time everything is bending around the craft right and i right. wonder why an emp uh differs from that could be from the uh, from the gamma ray burst that happens when a nuclear weapon goes off it could be from a lot of different factors. It could be from something that they weren't planning for at right. that particular time that caused their field to go down, which probably at that point, they went back to the drawing board to make sure, yeah, we need to increase this stuff. So this will never happen again. Right. Got you. Now, what, what's your take, sir, on Skinwalker Ranch, particularly because, you know, you've, we've had, uh, you know, Jacques Vallée comment on it. We've had, uh, you know, Bigelow, obviously, as we all know, we have now in the at least depending on whether or not you'd like to, you know, in general, people would like to believe the book uh, Skinwalkers at the Pentagon, uh, the primary consultant behind the OSAP uh, and BASS or B-A-A-S-S, -S, uh, Bigelow Airspace Data Warehouse was um, Mr. Jacques Vallée himself. So what's your what's your take on Skinwalker Ranch, sir? Are you consulting? John Fellay, I believe, was consulting on the database. On the database, yes. On the okay. database they put together, of which there were 11 uh, pillars of information that they were Correct. going to handle on. Skinwalker Ranch. The first time I heard about Skinwalker Ranch was when I was visiting uh, Colonel John Alexander's house back in 2004, I believe, at that time. This is before anyone really knew about Skinwalker Ranch. Right. Uh, uh, Colonel A walked me through. Uh, the, uh, he was there with himself, Bert Rattan. Uh, and uh, Bigelow, and they were up on the ridge. And as they were up on the ridge, they went and observed something that looked like a energy portal that opened up out in front of them. And when they were looking through their high-end their, their high, their high military binoculars, then they saw something crawl up out of it and run off into the woods. Now, this is coming from someone who's you know, very credible, has been involved with, he was involved with remote viewing, uh, with Russell Targ and all those guys. If you, if you ever hear any Russell Targ talking about, it was the colonel. He doesn't mention him by name, but that's close enough. That was Alexander who was involved with all of this woo stuff back then. Sorry, sir. So, what, what, what was the colonel's name again? Colonel John Alexander. 
John Alexander. Sorry, please go on. Yeah. And he talked about it. And, you know, I went and, you know, after uh, hearing, uh, you know, going over to his place a couple of times with my old agent, uh, Barry Friedman, rest his soul. Uh, Barry was a great guy and introduced me to Colonel A. But after hearing this, I, you know, it was originally called, called Bigelow Ranch before it was Skinwalker. And it's not just happening now. It's been happening in that area for hundreds of years. They've been doing some observations with it. They don't know what the heck it is there. It feels like at times it could be, you know, something that's a trickster that's going ahead and, and playing around with the people that are there. There was two cameras. There was one camera in a pasture pointing down at another camera that was in that particular uh, on the pasture. Um, all of a sudden, this camera went off right at the same time it was going to go off. The cattle just kind of rustled and moved for a little bit. When they went out the next day and observed it and checked, and checked out what was going on, the, uh, the, the data line going to the camera that was monitored on the top of the pole for watching what was going on had six feet of the cable sliced out of the middle inside of the conduit. Now, how in the heck is something like that going to happen just in a, in, in a flash, all of a sudden it's gone, and now you still got the camera watching it, and there was nothing that they ever saw that had happened, yet the camera went down and that was cut so it basically kind of showed whatever was going on has an ability to manipulate matter time space yeah, in a right. way and has an intelligence about it that's beyond what we understand what it is do you think um there is some type of uh, again whether it's paranormal or extraterrestrial we can argue very strongly one in the same in a lot of regards but do you think there is any type of i guess you could say um energy source maybe beneath the ground of skinwalker ranch there, there's been speculation on that um of, of some to some extent but is there anything also that uh, colonel uh, alexander said to you whether on the record or off the record that you maybe can't my speak dog in here one second and i'll answer sure that. sure no problem no problem Good. I'm glad it's not just me. Those fucking cats are magicians. <laughs> um, there's a lot of things that could be potentially. Why is it happening at Skinwalker? If anything, it could be more of a geological uh, makeup of, of the particular area. There could be like a, a, a half, you know, if you want to call it dome magnetic residence that's going on that allows this particular kind of phenomena to be able to coming into the here. But there's a lot of crazy stuff that's been, you know, going on in Utah for a very long time and it's so, just hard to know what what is the actual cause behind it other than it could be a geological effect that it's allowing this kind of temporal displacement to go on so we the thought would be even getting into um ley lines is what they're like to be called those kind of maybe pocket dimension things is that yep. what we're kind of getting at yeah yeah it, it could be i mean like you're talking about the ley lines or if, if you've got it if you look at all the uh the pyramids on our planet which we still don't understand they weren't burials there was a lot bigger uh God, reason that we don't yeah. get um they're big enough and they actually make changes to the gravity on the planet in those particular areas and they all line up on a particular grid that if you go and connect them and draw the lines between it there's something more going on that we just don't understand i mean if you look at it you know there's a regular you know disaster cycle that goes on on the planet on a regular basis we've got another one on its way particularly could could be happening soon and if that goes on, how long does it take for us to lose all of our information that we have? Let's say 80, 90, 95% of the population gets wiped out. You have a small amount of people that are left. Do we have no more right. writing materials, no more digital stuff and everything? How long does it take for the people who have the information that's left before they forget it, before it's not passed right. down? Maybe a generation or two at the most. That's it. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I, I did want to ask again, I don't mean to, to press too, too much, but uh, Colonel Alexander, did he say anything to you off the record or on the record about his involvement with any potential projects while he was serving or with his even his personal opinion afterwards when he was with Bigelow and, and whatnot? Uh, did he say anything about the phenomenon more uh, of any type of veracity that, that you can recall or? He was the biggest, the, one of the first ones to say, we don't know where they're coming from. They're not necessarily coming from another galaxy way the heck out there. These, these uh, craft could be coming in from another dimension. 
Yeah. Well, this is something okay. he said publicly, but he was one of the first people out there that I can uh, recollect who actually took that attitude towards him. It's something we hear a lot these days that it could be from another dimension. And if you look at dimensions, think of it like wireless signals, right? Think of yeah. all the matter we have within and around us all has a certain level of vibration. If you have other, you know, frequencies of vibration that matter can be on technically or possibly Co you could have multiple dimensions overlaying, taking up the exact same place. And that's how, if you would want to call it, people and I have experienced, they call something heaven on earth, where they think heaven is up there, but potentially heaven could be around us. And we just don't realize it because it's just another frequency of, yeah, yeah, of, yeah. of matter or reality. Right, right. Now, speaking of another frequency of matter or reality, um, one thing I did want to, 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 to wrap up on my end before Camden asks you uh, the questions about, uh, about remote viewing and all that. He's very excited. I, got um, I, I wanted to ask about um, your perspective on the Wilson Davis document or memo, if you want to call it uh, very quickly. I'm sure most of the audience does know, but for those who don't know, it has to do with an alleged conversation that took place between Dr. Eric Davis and Admiral Wilson, uh, I think back in 2000 and was it late 90s, early 2000s? If I'm not mistaken, I can't remember off the top of my head, but yes, what what do you make of that with regards to uh, now, Eric, uh, Mr. Dr. Davis? Again, we see now deleted clips from Mr. Greenstreet and and that whole interview there. What do we? What do you think of that? I mean, why are people so hung up on on this particular memo? Is it because people of such high credibility are discussing something that was considered woo woo for many years by the, the by the masses, or it's something that I haven't. Uh... De uh, dug into extensively. Uh, uh, a friend of mine, uh, Tony or Anthony Bregalia from uh, ufoexplorations.com. That was one of the questions he wanted me to ask Luella Zondo. And I specifically asked him about the Davis documents. And his answer was, I can't talk on that. Right. What, 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 so what do you, it was yeah. enough to, if it wasn't real, he'd be able to comment on that and make a statement relative to whether or not, if it wasn't real, he would say that all oh, that's just a bunch of stuff that's made up. But if it gets to a point and he says, I can't comment on that, it's something you don't push him on because it's within the area of his NDA. And that alone in itself lends a high level of credibility to the, to the situation of what's being discussed. Right, right. Got you. Now, sorry, one last thing I did want to ask, and this could sort of transition into the, the remote viewing angle of things. Are you a believer? So there's been a debate lately about, uh, you know, if the phenomenon is a more nuts and bolts type of, a, you know, apparatus, or if it's more so that of a spiritual, esoteric, you know, etheric kind of kind of uh, engagement, if you will. Yeah. Uh, do you, I mean, a lot of people subscribe to both. Uh, I know lately Lou uh, Elizondo gave a great example of saying, you know, think about a, a pyramid, like the, the pyramid in Egypt and one person yeah. stands on one, one side saying this is religion and then and another person stands on the other side saying this is science but as you climb that pyramid the two meet and they intersect and Mr. Elizondo, I think he did a great job giving you an example of that. But speaking to, to Lou, getting the chance to speak to Lou, of course, doing research of, of multitudes of your own, what do you think is the case with the phenomenon? Do you think different species are more evolved than other species, allegedly? some We see some craft being much more nuts and bolts, whereas other ones look seem biological or seem to be, at least seem to be biological. What, what well, do you... one thing that Lou said was that... Uh... In, in, in not so many words, I mean, actually more in scientific terms, what we're seeing are not biological craft. We're right. not seeing craft that are, if you want to call it life forms in their own, you know, that are out there as living creatures potentially of something from another dimension or even from earth or something to that degree. So it's, right. um, I take that to, to a big part is what we're seeing are craft that are being piloted by something. It's non-human. Yeah. They've been around on this planet for a long time. And it's, you'll see there's been a lot of observations of the movement of these craft. And they're acting like dolphins. They're acting flocking like birds. There's a lot of behaviors in them that tie back to earthling behaviors. But we're seeing these same behaviors mm. coming from these craft that are probably, you know, they could be remotely piloted. But a lot of these things are could potentially be piloted by actual, you know, non-humans that and are... That are dealing with it now with respect to um the spirituality part we yes. have to take spirituality and disconnect it from religion spirituality consciousness is not owned by any religion 
not the Catholic Church, not Hinduism, nothing. We have different perceptions of it, but it's uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a level of uh, if you want to call it reality that extends beyond the physical form. And it's hard for a lot of people to be able to get, say, I want to see nuts and bolts. Show me the proof. Show me the information mm -hmm. with regards to it being, you know, real. But it's it's hard with consciousness and when you're doing remote viewing or you're doing different things. But when you go ahead and you do a, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big proponent of the government isn't going to tell us shit. They're going to keep us dripping along with information for the absolute longest time. That information that comes across, we have a better chance of getting it from the non-human intelligence than we can getting it from the government itself. So I'm in, if you want to call myself, I'm a big proponent of, you know, uh, UAP transparency now that we need to force the government to do it. We need to get people in the streets. We need to get protests going worldwide on this because it's important, but we had a better chance of getting it from the intelligence itself. So I've been going off and doing a, it's not really CE5. It's a combination of uh, crown chakra source meditation that I do, uh, bringing in energy from the source at the same time, combining that with eyes open Samadhi meditation. Wow. Uh, if you want to call it going out in the cul-de-sac in front of my house, getting down on one knee, putting my hand over the access port to the water system, Water is important. It acts as a great antenna and pushing out the message, come here now. We need that selfie moment. We need the live stream moment. We need this. We need something to come in and have a connection that we can have is definitive proof. So there is no question about what we're dealing with. But although I was hoping to go ahead and get a light show and everything, I didn't get that. I got a, uh, if you want to call it, a reestablished uh, a string of quantum consciousness that probably about 30, 40 minutes later, I went outside to look around and see if there's anything coming to skies because I've had orbs flying over my house uh, many times in the past. And I've gotten uh, one of them at least recently on video. And, you know, it wasn't a light show I was expecting. What I got was, was this big dump of information that they've been here for the longest time, that they've been, that they've interacted with men with man, humanity, for many times throughout the past, the key points to ensure the civilization, ensure the continuance of humanity, that right. uh, there's something big that's coming towards us and we must act as one, not humans and earthlings separate, but in order for us all to succeed, humanity and the intelligence needs to come together. And it wasn't just words coming, coming through me. I mean, I saw, if you want to call it, countless just holographic images of just different points in time, different places around the world, one laid on top of the other, on top of the other, on top of the other. It's such a fast raid. I was going to ask when you stepped outside, what you saw. On go ahead. Just, sorry. I was going to ask when you, when you stepped outside, what you saw, yeah. how that information came to you. Cause I absolutely believe you did. Was it sort of like a, an absorption, like a wave of energy coming to, what did it feel like? What did um, it, it? I I've had an ability for a long time to get reached out to by people who have passed away. Usually okay. it's through magnetic resonance on an object, like holding up my iPad Pro that my mom had. I can be able to bring her in and reconnect with it. There's something about our, our, our spirituality or consciousness that leaves a magnetic resonance on things. Sometimes it'll just be coming from being in a place with someone who had some in the past recently, having an object that meant a lot to someone or coming in contact with it. And I'll get this wave of, if you want to call it, vibrations that passes through my body in a, in a different order and a different strength. There were every, every spiritual individual that I deal with has a different signature of what they are. Now take right. that level of, if you want to call it vibration that I got, and it's like going from a nine volt battery than being plugged into 220. Oof. And the, you know, it was just a, this kind of a whole thing that kind of came through me. When I get a lot of times, it'll make some of the hair stand up on my body, but it felt like the hair was just standing up on my entire body. And at that point, it was like, okay, uh, I draw, you know, I'm, you know, open, you know, you drop down into a level of consciousness and you say, hello. Does it feel, okay. does it feel anyone there? Yet? If I may ask, does it feel like space, if I may ask, sorry, does it feel like space and time around you within a relative period, it, it sort of stops? Like you're numb, no. you're void? No? Okay. 
No, okay. this is just something that kind of comes through. For me, it was just too much information, too fast. And I had to say, dumb human, slower, please. <laughs> <laughs> and sorry, just, just, to re just to recap, what was the information you received pertaining to, uh, again, uh, humanity coming together collectively? Um, any the, the other biggest issues that came to mind at that time was seeing was that we have over 200 nuclear power plants on, on the edges of our oceans at this point. If we get another giant catastrophe that comes and hits this planet like a regular basis, we're going to be seeing something like Fukushima or Chernobyl thousands of times over, and it's going to destroy the planet's ability to move forward and regenerate like it has any other time before. So there's a concern, and they've been going and showing this for the longest time. They've been over our nuclear plants. They've been over yeah. our, our nuclear weapons, and they've been, you know, telegraphing this message. And it was, if anything, it was just more of a, a, a clarification of it. Right, right. Now, I just wanted to say, to be honest with you, I, I, this, this has been going great. I, I really appreciate it. Since we're on the topic of, of telepathy and in, in consciousness and, and that yeah. whole aspect there, Camden, if, you, if you'd like to, well, to take it away. Th this uh, remote viewing, as you, as you spoke on already, this, this kind of innate human, like this, mm -hmm. this, these phones aren't real technology. We kind of have an innate human technology about us that uh, we've kind of been made to forget. One of the biggest things you can point to is the Gateway Process uh, document, yep. um, 1984. Now, uh, I that story you just told, you know, hair standing up, drop down into consciousness, like whoa, hold, like I I've experienced that heavily before as well. That it's a it's a it's hard. It's an inarticulate feeling. I 100% agree with you. Um, but this Gateway Process seems to be something that at least the CIA worked really, really hard to articulate really, really, really wordily. Word, wordy? You know if I could sorry, say very, very quickly, uh, allegedly, as I'm sure you're familiar with, sir, uh, Lou Elizondo was, I say allegedly, uh, uh, his remote viewing techniques uh, were of vital importance to James Mattis, um, yeah. as they say. Uh, but anyways, please, Camden, no, go on. You're right. No, that's a good point to bring up. Uh, but is the this kind of spiritual uh, esoteric this connection to the collective consciousness maybe seems to be even more important than than anyone's ever given credit to um yeah. walking back to that skinwalker ranch story uh, why couldn't it have been some sort of remote viewing type of uh they're over here but they've they've manifested actual matter to change in this place over here at skinwalker ranch and cut that wire in the six feet space that you were talking about like so there why is yeah, but that goes beyond uh remote viewing now we're oh, talking yeah. about something that's being able to manipulate stuff on a so time matter space, and space and time. time absolutely and so but Love why it. isn't that what people like lou elizondo are, are is that just their ndas type thing is why is it why isn't he, that he seems to not be able to com to, to, to comment much on the the sort of consciousness remote viewing aspect and yeah even though it's already publicly a freedom of information right. act document. but the reason they got released from the freedom of information act is because russell targ who was the uh if you want to call a principal with the stanford research institute was the one who actually put in the request to get all of this information declassified because he knew about it and he wanted project stargate to go ahead and the right. information to come to be opened up about it because it needed to be it's it's an amazing skill that a lot of people have and i believe the process that uh, lou is taught is with the same one that the army's been using for the longest time that was initially pioneered by a lot of the people along the lines of ingle swan yeah in the past do you find that and technique that particular still, method do you find that particular method uh, a successful method well i didn't go with the gateway process or the, the Ingle Swan method, I've had, uh, I, I went through silver mind control back in the early mm. 70s. And supposedly they were actually taking, looking for kids who had really high skills back at that time. And then they were being tracked and further trained by the government. And it was actually being used as a recruiting method for people within their psi area of yeah. the government. Um, luckily, I went with my mom on several occasions so i wasn't an official person who was in there with the program i was just the kid who was getting brought along as a tag along but as my mom was going through this and she was seeing a bunch of dark things and not really seeing anything i it, it opened up a complete world of holy crap i can do all this stuff that's only been going and escalating as the older i get oh my gosh so it's, that matter sorry the, the if i'm not please uh, forgive me if i'm not hearing this correctly but the the army 
didn't focus on you. They focused on your mother. No, they didn't focus on me or my mom. Oh. The Army was focusing on kids who were enrolled in civil mind control who were able to go ahead and get the same results that I was getting. But because I wasn't a person who was actually enrolled in it, who wasn't tracked by the system, someone who was coming along as a tag along, as they'd call it, that's how I was able to go ahead and pick up the skills. Now, the remote viewing nice. I have is different from a lot of other people. I, I rely on mine in more, of, it's more of a chakra energy meditation where I usually start off, I'll drop down the level. That's basically, if you want to call it quieting your mind. From yeah, there, yeah, yeah. Uh, going up through the third eye uh, directly, entering into uh, the crown chakra, building up a full energy form from that, and then bringing down white energy from the source and using that for, for imaging or different stuff that either I need to get, need to get shown because my higher consciousness, want, you know, overrides to, where I'm yeah, going right. or it's things that I'm seeing. And sometimes it kind of reminds me of uh, the holographic images we saw in Star Wars with uh, Princess Leia. Okay. I right. like that analogy. Right. And, but it's not just an image. It's actually a 3D scene that's just kind of moving and shifting. But as the white energy comes in from the sides or goes across the path to a degree, it's redrawing the image and it's a slow refresh rate. But it's still a full image of the stuff that it's, I'm going through. And you're seeing it sometimes it's, you know, it looks like a magazine picture that you cut up and you try to put back together. Other times it's as clear as watching a, uh, you know, a black and white movie. Where it's right. like you're seeing the things in full motion and things are going on. Sometimes it's in color, usually less. But it's uh, it's something that you know I I've developed over a long period of time. And there's a bunch of different stuff along those areas. And one time I did was doing some things that supposedly I shouldn't have been doing. And I got on the call with Colonel Alexander and he got me on the phone with someone else who was higher up who'd been doing this, probably someone from SRI. And after I gave him the description of what I'm not gonna give now, they're like, Thomas, you need to do me a favor. You don't understand what you're dealing with and you need to stop. And promise us you're going to stop. Okay, sorry, uh, sir. What, what does SRI stand for? Just to Stanford for Research Institute. It's where they Stan pioneered all the different skills for and pioneered the entire remote viewing program. And and if I sorry, if I may, ask, I just wanted to ask you, when you talked about the crown chakra manifesting into like a full, you know, the the whole thing there. The, was this a visualization method, if I may oh, ask? Visualization, yes. I don't get I don't get sounds. I don't get smells. Right. I get a, a full visualization going on. And and they. Uh, yeah, sorry, just one more thing, Camden. You're I just good, wanted to ask, they, right were they able to, I guess in a certain way, because the body's sort of like an antenna or is an antenna in a lot of ways, right? Were they, how did they, I'm, I'm, wow, I'm blown away. How did they, it's like they picked up on their radar on however method and apparatus they were doing and using that you were meddling with this and they picked that up and they wanted to, out of, it's seemingly kindness, say, listen, Thomas, you don't know what you're getting no, into. No, I was doing some things that uh, most people wouldn't consider doing with effects on others that I did, they didn't quite, I didn't like the output of it. And I was trying to figure out what I did wrong and what I had learned. And then hearing that, that's the stuff. This is well would, would any of this have been, if I, with the utmost respect, would any of this may have been classified as black magic back in the day or no? Well, there's no spells or anything going on. There's there's okay. no right. things okay. that I'm doing. This is just, you know, getting down into doing stuff. And well, then... Uh, finding photographs, doing things with it, and then uh, building intent, gathering karma, and launching it. <laughs> right, no, no, I got well, you. Well, see, the, I, I even go back to uh, the person that said, Thomas, you don't know what you're dealing with. I've found myself getting similar messages, I guess you call it from the other side, uh, um, in, in synchronicity, things that happen right before your very eyes, that there's no way all that just happened right there. And it, it does. Why is that? It why is there is, I mean, you point, I point to uh, people like Ram Das taking psychedelics to Tibetan monks and them saying nothing's changed. I'm, I, this is already how I live my life. So like how, why are, who is allowed and who isn't, I guess is what I'm asking. Um, how do it's I, a weird thing. There's a bunch of different things. And what I've learned is do what you can. Unless you get something that physically stops you, do whatever the heck you can because okay. there may not be a price for it. And it just may be the stuff that we can do and uh, can literally get away with. Okay. You... No, no, no. I like fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, do it's... you. 
Oh, sorry, Cam, to go, please. No, no, you got it, you got it. I, I was just going to ask, do you believe that the government is sort of what they say nowadays that at least the United States government, that they don't have a remote viewing team? Meanwhile, we hear <laughs> again that, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, we've yeah, honestly, laugh, not, that we, absolutely. Right. not that we needed any proof for evidence, but again. There was one time there was a, a Russian plane that went down in Africa and they needed to be able to go ahead and find that Russian plane in Africa because it was a spy plane or someone who was basically going and escaping from the Soviet Union. And we wanted access to the information that was on the plane and what the pilot had had before a crash. With remote viewing, they were taking, they were shown exactly where they needed to go. And within a, uh, you know, within a fraction of a distance from where they said it was, sure enough, that's where the plane was. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I believe even Ingo Swan has gone to the moon and seen things. He's gone and, and seen stuff on Mars. There's other points where he was actually going and observing. Uh, if you, uh, I think there was four different bases from, you know, ETs that are on this planet. And I know I remember two of them. One is in Zimbabwe and another one was in uh, Alaska. Are there, can these beings or other entities or even other humans... Are, is remote viewing, and I, I genuinely ask this because I'm not, I'm not sure, I'm not uh, too, too familiar with it myself, but is it like, uh, like allegedly like astral projection? You can meet someone else in the astral realm if you do it at the same time. You agree to meet at the same place, presuming you can hold that form or that energy being outside of your physical body for so long. Is there anything you've heard of or even experienced? yourself that you know you've come into an interaction while remote viewing with something else maybe maybe even you saw something happen while you were viewing a particular environment yeah i bet i think canon have something to an answer to that oh, no, I do that. because i think it gets even into uh the person the personal experience of these things that like you like you talked about no it's a visual thing for you i don't get sound i don't get feelings i don't get smell there's seems to be an individualization of this um ascension of this out-of-body experience of right. this uh, of your soul disconnect so they're right. really like yes i guess is the answer because it it, it can be to anyone but it's, but it's all different things there's one exactly. is going off and doing the visualization going to another spot and then getting shown a scene mm -hmm. of tachitiwakan with a mile high or thousand foot high if you want to call it with a city being around it and seeing the whole tidal wave going across it and then you get another the update of the image and everything is just decimated you've got the pyramid left there but all the all the 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 housing all of the different bustling that was going on all the trees are all just wiped out or there's something that's more of an out of body to where uh i used to get i have a i have artificial discs in my neck at c5 c6 and c6 and c7 and have a bunch of issues going on with that. i've got I've had you know probably hundreds if not thousands of hours of physical therapy of people working on my neck throughout the year i'm, I'm sorry to hear oh it's okay but it was it was during those times that i what they would said well i need you to not resist what we're going to do so you know, I know how to not resist. I'm just going to go ahead, shut my body down and go off and have fun. And sometimes I've gone up and I even like people say it's like, you know, they can go up and see themselves in a room getting yeah, work yeah. on the operating table. I've had stuff like that happen where I've actually saw my uh, therapist working on my neck and I saw like gold energy coming out of his hands. And I said to him, have you ever been trained in Reiki? And he's like, why are you asking that? It's like, well, I just saw you going ahead and working on my neck. You had this orange gold energy coming out of your hands and you must have learned it from somewhere. It's like, well, uh, yeah, I kind of had some training here or there, but it's nothing I actively practice. And I'm like, uh-huh, sure. Whoa. No, it's, and, and oh, it's just, ooh. No, when you I saw you, this. wait, sorry. I just want to ask when you saw yourself, let's just say that we're using that particular, that experience, when you saw yourself in your physical body being worked on and all that with the physical therapy, did you see yourself in, in with, with, um, was it described as sort of like that star Wars hologram in the visual sense? Was it sort of blue white? Yeah, sort there's, of? there's, yeah. there's the couple different ones there's there's yeah, ones exactly. where it's kind of like a remote viewing where you're going and projecting yourself to a different location when you're doing obe you're literally there it's in full color it's like uh december 2019 mm. um for all the different stuff that hit with what we're yeah. dealing with right now yeah, i was right. uh going down and i was being a smart ass and let's figure out let's go ahead and let's go ahead and let's do a remote viewing let's try and bring up god right Okay. Or in a raised Catholic in the Midwest, you know, just trying to take what I've learned and everything and let's just see what I can do and see if I'll get stopped. Right. And all of a sudden, I'm expecting to go ahead and bring up the energy fields and see all this stuff. All of a sudden, poof, I'm standing in full color and I'm, there was these giant 
white marble blocks that I'm, I'm standing on and I'm lo and looking around off to the side of the blocks is all this like clouds and stuff. And it's a whole walled city that I'm in. And in front of me, there was a, a step of stairs going up kind of a, a rounded kind of a piece. And there were pillars and white elephants and all this kind of stuff in there. And the towers were topped with gold, uh, uh, kind of stuff like you would have seen in Aladdin to a degree. Yeah, yeah, and then right. standing in the center there, there was a short Indian guy. He was about five foot three, five foot four, uh, adorned in red, in a red outfit, red coat, you know, adorned with gold. And he was just there standing and smiling at me. And I'm like, where the hell am I? How, in the, and it's just like, you just kind of look at it. You kind of raise your hand and you wave. And then he smiled <laughs> and he waved back. When that happened, it was just too much of a shock because you're getting a reaction, things coming From back the, mm -hmm. in the environment. And then I popped out of it. It took about a week, week and a half until my husband Luke helped me figure out where, where the heck it was. And if I, if you look at the ancient pictures, it's the depiction of Shambhala. Yeah. And according to what wow. I've seen in Shambhala, that's the 10th carnation of Vishnu, whose name is Kalki, which wow. was a very- okay, So very importantly, sorry to me, he had a face, right? He had a- Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, so sometimes when this has happened to me, I don't know how to describe it. Like, no, like they're they're bipedal and they have human form, but there's no necessarily like eyes, nose, mouth yes. there. And yeah. and um and those are the really interesting ones to me because they do react to you. Those are more spiritual to yes. a degree. Yes. When you're, in, you know, it's like when my dad passed away, I I couldn't be there. I was had just visited him for a week and back in Chicago. And I was able, if I can get in contact physically with a person before they're going to pass, it, it helps me to keep establish long-term links with them. And I was yeah. able to do that when they had passed. And it's like, I need you to call me when dad dies. It's really important. They called me and said, dad just passed. So I dropped down and I went looking for him. In that moment. Mind. Okay. I love that. And, okay. I, and I, uh got to a spot that kind of looked like it was open in the center. You know, and off to one side, there was these energy beings, kind of like what you're describing. I could know, see the one was there with my dad, but there were like 30 or 40 other ones around mm. there. And what I got the feeling was they were there to celebrate his ascension because on the other side of it, there was this staircase that kind of went up in a curved form with like thick glass stairs hanging there in the blackness with a door at the top. And right off to the side of this was this angelic white beautiful thing it wasn't a dove it wasn't an angel i don't know what the hell it was and it just had its wings kind of going into a degree but and this was yeah. this, just to clarify this was different than this was an out-of-body experience obe this was different than remote viewing and you were conscious no God, of yeah. that you yeah, were aware yeah, of I, I went to go yeah, yeah. find something to go to a location to go and track him down as he was getting ready to ascend. And I said, Dad, I know you be maybe off. astral projecting of sorts, Dave, like you yes. talked about earlier. Yeah. And I said, Dad, I know you've had a hard time. You've gone through a lot of different stuff the last 10, 20 years. A lot of the people didn't, you know, understand where you were coming from. And it wasn't the greatest time. You know, I know I know here every myself and everyone else here is here to celebrate your ascension. But if you want to come back with me right now. Let's go. There's more than enough room. And from there, I was back in my back in my body, laying there, and I saw a blue light energy being come down and merge with my body. And he's been with me ever since. Wow. So now, when you can you man, can you deliberately um, tell yourself whether you want to remote view or leave your body? Or sometimes do they do they sort of conflate? Sometimes you have one you have one plan, and then something else ends up happening. Depends on what I'm trying to see. Right. Got you. Okay. It's, it's, it's what like I'm trying the, to see. It's, to, it's all on in like individual belief. It's like, it's like faith is really what my yeah. best analogy is. Um, a lot of why religion is so important. Historically speaking, mm -hmm. if you can get your whole family to truly believe the same afterlife, they will all go to said same yeah. afterlife. It's energy that yeah. is together in life yeah. comes together afterlife that's what i'm talking about this right. magnetic residence that yeah. everything has i'm sure if anyone were to take this ibm ps2 model m keyboard from that i've been using you know it's a 1984 keyboard that yeah. i've been my entire career it's nice. gonna, I've, I've put a lot of thought and energy into it i'm going to be able to be contact through it if someone wanted to now yeah, okay. um 
there is a there is you know a lot of understanding that we just don't really get. I don't get it, but I, you know that's why I call there's a heaven on earth because you know I've I've touched cookbooks from people and it's like it was someone who had just passed away. It was a best friend that I never had met before. And she's like, oh, this was uh, uh, you know, for my friend, she was uh, uh, she was uh, you know, this is her favorite cookbook. It was from Vincent Price. A lot of people didn't know he was a restaurateur, but as we were go, as she opened and started showing it to me. And talking about how he would go to the restaurants and have these really good meals and the, the chef would walk him through is what they're going to have he'd then go back into the kitchen get this story about where the guy got the recipe from and had all the recipes in this book as well but as i was going this is some mm. of the earliest times i can re uh, remember having this kind of an energy that i started you know looking for and understanding is i got the book and i was going through it and as i was touching it i started getting recognizing that feeling that i was getting the hair standing up and it was like you know, how did she, she, how did she die? And it's like, oh, she died of a heart attack. And I'm like, oh, that is that interesting. The next thing was, mm -hmm. tell me what the hell's up with my left leg because it feels so weird. I've never felt anything like this before. It's like, well, when she was 14, she was in a car accident and her leg was amputated. Oh my God! Wow. Yeah, it's it's the, oh God, I love this. Yeah, no, there's a yeah. real material qua quantitative. Yes. measurement to these things that, that yeah. uh, until you experience them people yeah. can't understand yeah. right. there was a good friend who was a bartender in downtown seattle his mama just passed away and he was going through and cleaning out her apartment and as i went there to get uh one of my favorite drinks it was a uh, vodka red bull or vodka diet hey, red that's my favorite yeah. one too I, I went to go ahead and we were uh i was at the bar and we were going and I was talking to him and he mentioned her and it's like, yeah, she had passed away and everything. And as I was, he was talking about, it, I was getting the sensations, but I was just trying to ignore it and, and everything. But then as I was going to walk off, I had to go back and stop. And it's like, okay, I know this is going to sound crazy, but your mom is here with you right now. There's something that happened between you and your mom when you were six mm. years old. And that's all I know. I need you to stop everything and just... Confront clear them. your mind yeah. and think about that go there yeah, with your mom right now because she's here with you and she wants to share that with you and he just started crying he's like how in the hell did you know that and i'm like i don't know but it came to me and, if, and i and it, it would my feeling kept as i was walking away the the feeling i got got stronger and stronger and stronger where i had to turn back because well so that's my next question immediately because i've not done that before because i don't i, I don't know how people like, so that was yeah, a positive was. experience for that person that you spoke to, but it feels sometimes like that is too powerful to like put on someone else that you like, I, I it's a burden. I, you know, so like, I mean, I applaud you. Absolutely. It's but not a burden. That's Some something you should say do? it's a burden, but it's really, it's a gift. It's a gift. Okay. Mm. It's a skill. It's a gift yeah. and it's a skill. Okay. Wow. I well, I, I, I just wanted to say I'm, I'm, I'm I'm blown away. I've I've had a phenomenal time speaking with you, Sir Cam. I haven't been told you about during the 19. Well, we can do this for another show if you want. Again, we can have a talk oh, yeah, about you're uh, back. Oh, when yeah. I was in 1973, and uh, I got taken up in a saucer. That, that really that was something that went on for three years that blew my mind. It you know what? Remember it though. But you know, you know what? If it's all right with you, let's save that for the next yeah. time you come yeah, on. That'll, that'll be the, uh, the that'll be the cliffhanger for everybody. Okay. Yeah. Well, could you please tell our audience where they can find you, how they can find you, and the, the best way to, 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 to look for you and all that? Well, if you just search Thomas Fessler on YouTube, that seems to be the number one search coming in right now. Uh, and just search me on YouTube. You'll find that I've got two shows. One is Disclosure Tonight that we've been doing nightly on a regular basis. And the other one is I've been – like you guys cover a lot of news topics – yeah. Uh, a little bit more in depth than I do, but I, I have a great method for going ahead and covering the news a little bit center, right? To a degree of, of taking my tilt on things and, you know, people have a blast. It's, it's kind of like, uh, I call it late night update instead of weekend update, because there's nothing better about talking about serious topics like China and what's going on with their hypersonic missiles, our failed missile tests that are going yeah. on, hypersonic weapons, and just a bunch of the different stuff of what's happening, you know, in science, in astronomy, in health, and in world issues that are affecting yeah. all of us. Well, again, thank you so, so much, Thomas, for coming on, sir. We will have you yeah. back uh, if you'd be willing to very, very oh. soon to uh, to discuss even more. Yeah. I think we just and I hope the I'm not going and freaking people out. I'm just no, I'm no. an honest person. 
I've been through a lot. I've learned a lot. And the best thing I found to do is the same person you're talking to right now is the same person you'll see on my show is the same person when I'm not on camera. I like I to be agree. real of who I am and talk about stuff. 100%. I, I, you know, people could say you're making this stuff up. I was like, well, I was told that when I was a little kid. I'm not making anything up. Mm, I'm right. just trying to tell you as much no, as I mean, I, I think can. it even no, it helps it. even that I like, I, I mean, we, we verified with each other those kinds of feelings and experiences. Yeah. So, I, yeah, no, I, right. I, I mean, I don't like, I tell people I'm batshit all the time. So like, yeah, sure. But I, I think it's real. I, I can, I can assure you, Thomas, our audience is, it, I'm more than confident that they're not going to think that you're crazy or out there by any stretch. There's a, there are a lot of people, part of our members community, uh, even people that aren't part of the members community that, that really can relate with you. And I, I really yeah, do thank you so, it. so much for coming on, sir. And uh, thank you so much for everybody that tuned in to listen, whether it was audio or visual, and uh, we'll catch all of you next time. Cheers.